In today's episode, we will be learning about muscle damage and regeneration. The most common cause of muscle damage is through mechanical traumas, which could be due to overloading the muscle during eccentric training or long distance running. Tearing occurs in the myofibril plasma membrane and basal lamina, causing an influx of extracellular calcium ions into the muscle cells. Oh, that was a tough 100 kilometer run. Boy, am I tired though. Four to six days later. Oh, my legs are so sore. I wonder what is going on. Cruising on down Main Street, you're relaxed and feeling good. Look here at this micro tear. This is the first sign of muscle damage that Ava is experiencing due to the long distance run. Watch closely as you can see that an increase in calcium concentrations can cause disruption of the intermediate filament network and may stimulate selective hydrolysis, which can disrupt fiber structure. Muscle damage causes a series of responses in the body. This includes increased inflammation, degradation of muscle proteins, and hematoma formation in the localized area. Contraction force will be limited with muscle damage. However, the integrity and strength of the muscle can be re-established as you soon will discover. With muscle damage, neutrophils are one of the first inflammatory cells that arrive at the injured site. They secrete pro-inflammatory molecules such as cytokines, which signal other inflammatory cells to travel to the injured site. The arrival of inflammatory cells causes the first stage of muscle regeneration to occur. This involves the digestion of the damaged cellular components by macrophages, phagocytosing, and disrupted myofilaments and cytosolic structures. Next in the muscle regeneration process is activation and proliferation of satellite cells to form new muscle building material. Satellite cells are located along the periphery between the sarcolemma and basal lamina of myofibers. Satellite cells only become active once injury has occurred. Upon stimulation after muscle injury, satellite cells all along the myofibers rapidly activate, proliferate, and migrate to the regeneration site. Finally, the fusion and maturation of myoblasts occurs. Satellite cells begin to differentiate into myoblasts. These fuse together to form primary myotubes that integrate into the basal lamina sheath. Secondary myotubes begin to form with their structure being very similar to primary myotubes. Contractile proteins begin pushing the nucleus of myocytes towards their cell membrane, which starts to increase the size of the cells of the newly developed myotubes. The myotubes go on to mature into myofibers. The gap between the damaged myofibers quickly fills with hematoma. The presence of fibrin and fibronectin within the hematoma stimulates the formation of an extracellular matrix which fills with fibroblasts. Many growth factors such as platelet-derived growth factor and connective tissue growth factor are found in the fibrosis material that enables the muscle to completely heal and continue to grow post-exercise damage. Finally, the revascularization and regeneration of the neuromuscular junctions within the damaged area occurs, allowing the muscle to return to normal functioning. This whole process of muscle regeneration can take up to three to four weeks. Now your muscle is ready again for action and Ava can run another 100 kilometers. <coughs> We hope you enjoyed today's episode about muscle damage and regeneration. Stay tuned for next week.